Hello. In this video we're going to be insulating my workshop, which in my case is a brick garage on a new build development. And uh, I'm not letting you see the uh, end result, although it's all done. Um, we're going to head inside and we'll start there. I've been in the house about 12 months, but I will admit to not using the workshop as much as I thought I would. This is partly due to having insufficient uh, storage and organisation in the workshop initially, uh, and partly due to the fact that it was so perishing cold over the winter months that just spending more than 15-20 minutes out there was really quite hard. And heating the workshop wasn't really the answer. Um, as much heat as I could put in through uh, an electric fan and a space heater, that heat just disappeared out through the walls and the roof and you really felt no benefit of it. So it's now July, perfect time for doing uh, an insulation project, uh, in particular because I can take everything out of the workshop and put the insulation in and then put everything back uh, overnight. Uh, Everything's on wheels, including my wood storage. See the video link above. But let's uh, go back to the very beginning and uh, take a look at day one of the project and a little video that I put on Instagram. Right, so just a quick video. I'm installing insulation in my workshop. It's a single skin um, brick garage wall. But I wanted to deal with a question that was in Keith Brown's post earlier today with regards um, mounting insulation on battens against a wall. In the house, you would normally um, lift the insulation up against the ceiling and then fix it flush against the ceiling. I can't do that here. So to get around that, um, I've put a strip of redwood. It's 94 millimeters wide under the rafters. And that will be what I push the insulation up against before fixing it to the wall. And that kind of gets around this ceiling issue that you have. And it makes sure that the void behind is... Um, the vapour barrier is maintained. Um, hope all that makes sense. There's more to come. I've got probably three days of this, uh, but for now, cheerio. You can see that I'm pretty excited to get started, and this project has been months in the making. I'm clearly interested in keeping the loft space open. I've also mentioned that I'll be fixing the insulation to battens on the inside of the wall, and we'll look at that shortly. And I mentioned the vapour barrier. Uh, and that's an important concept when thinking about putting in insulation and we'll cover that in a little bit more detail coming up. Now the workshop itself is 3.1 meters by 6.2 meters in size and the number one consideration is to try and maximize that internal space. Now in scope for this uh, video we'll be looking at the walls. Um, the space kind of divides into eight separate sort of wall areas and we'll be insulating six of those. There's a wall at the front of the garage which uh, will have a personnel door put in later in the year and we'll install the installation on that wall at that time. Now the best advice I was given as to how to insulate a single skinned brick garage was to apply the insulation to the exterior walls in order to maximize that amount of interior space. Unfortunately, I can't actually do that, and uh, so I'm left with trying to find a solution which, as far as possible, uh, minimizes the amount of space taken up by the insulation and the new wall uh, surfaces. Uh, I've come up with something which is about 75 millimeters thick, comprises of 25 millimeters of batten, and I'm using uh, blue roofing battens. Uh, 40 millimeters of insulation and uh, 12 millimeters of MDF or uh, 12.5 millimeters of uh, plasterboard. Now in the case of the plasterboard, the plasterboard and insulation come bonded together and the product that I'm using is from Celotex. In fact actually Celotex is the insulation that I've used throughout. Uh, I found a really useful source for that online which wasn't that expensive and I'll leave a link below. Okay so let's talk a little bit about vapour barriers. And this is a sort of basic diagram of the wall of 
the cold side, which is obviously outside, and then obviously warm and moist air inside the workshop. So I'm battening out the wall, and depending on the insulation material, you're really facing two choices. Choice number one is to fix the vapour barrier to the inside of the wall, behind the battens. So I'm using Celotex with a skin of either MDF or plasterboard on the inside. So Celotex has two foil faces and they form the vapour barriers, one at the front and one at the back. And the joints between boards, uh, between insulation boards, need to be uh, filled or taped in the case of the solid insulation. And uh, also you need to essentially seal the bottom and the top of the wall. And this ensures that warm moist air remains within the building and dry cooler air is uh, behind your insulation. Should prevent condensation forming here. So the construction of the insulated wall panels is pretty straightforward. We start with a damp proof course behind the batten and then the batten is fixed to the wall using masonry screws. Masonry screws avoid the need to have to use plugs. Uh, with the first wall which was going to have a uh, sheet and a half of insulated plasterboard. I battened at the top and the bottom of the wall and put some vertical battens up and I made a mistake. There should have been a second batten 600 millimeters in from the left hand edge. Uh, I forgot to put that in and unfortunately it's going to mean that I can't mount my um, TV stroke CNC monitor onto that wall. In the case of the insulated plasterboard, plasterboard screws at 30 centimetre spacings around the edge into the battens is all that's required. In the case of the Celotex and MDF option, I used uh, screws with uh, penny washers at the end to hold the insulation in place and then 80 millimeter uh, wood screws to go through the insulation and into the batten to hold the MDF onto the wall. But as the project developed, uh, we were battening, insulating, boarding out, priming, and then painting uh, each panel uh, as we went along is a little bit of a production line and um, the latter half of the project um, took maybe a day and a half to do uh, what had taken say maybe three or four days previously. As far as uh, the finished surface is concerned, uh, the plasterboard walls were uh, filled. Uh, all of the screw heads were filled with polyfiller. Um, the gap between the plasterboards was uh, jointed using jointing compound, uh, taped, and then uh, a skim coat of jointing compound put on the top. The walls sanded back, a uh, plasterboard primer applied and then two coats of Dulux 
uh, matte emulsion uh, to give the final finish look. The colour I used was warm pewter, so a light grey. So as far as the MDF boards are concerned, again, the surface filled and primed using an MDF primer. Essentially, that's just really a sort of watered down um, undercoat for timber, uh, specially designed for MDF. Uh, the results, in my case, have been really very, very good. Then on top of that, I've simply applied uh, two coats of the uh, Dulux wall, matte wall paint. Okay, so let's take a look at the cost of the project. I spent £90 on battens. Insulated plasterboard was £220. The Celotex 40mm was £160. And MDF was £120. Damp proof course, £16. Screws and fixings, £30. Sealant, £39. And that includes some expanding foam sealant for underneath the boards. Filler and tape, £25. And paint was £60. So the cost is £760. Now, included in the materials is everything that I need to finish the remaining wall and the garage door wall. So that's the total cost of the whole of the wall project. In a future video, we'll look at the roof space and uh, we'll tot up the costs of that separately. Okay, so do you want to see the finished result? Okay, so there you go. Uh, that's how I insulated the walls of my garage workshop. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any comments to make, or if you want to explain how you accomplished a very similar project yourself, then leave some comments below. But for now, from the workshop, cheerio.